ASU has rejected the core curriculum minimum academic standards created by the NUC. Hi, welcome to what's happening this at the top 10 stories. At number one, the Academic Staff Union of Universities has rejected the core curriculum minimum academic standards created by the National Universities Commission. They believe it will negatively affect the quality of education and undermine the authority of the university senates. ASU's President, Professor Emmanuel Osodeke, is concerned that the NUC is imposing a large portion of the CCMAS content on universities, leaving little room for their own academic program development. At number two, former Chief of Defense Staff, retired General Loki Irabo, retired from service and said goodbye to the armed forces of Nigeria. On Friday, the retirement ceremony was held at the Mogadishu Contament in Asoka, Abuja. Prominent individuals, including former Chiefs of Defense, Army, Navy and Air Staff, were present at the event. General Irabo served as the Chief of Defense Staff from January 2021 until he retired on June 19, which happened to be at the same time as President Bola Tinubu appointed new service chiefs. At number three, the Nigerian Port Authority is working to improve port operations by reducing the amount of time cargo spent at the port and removing overdue cargoes. A team led by Dr. Madeleine Ajani from various agencies assessed the situation at several ports and found that there are many cars and containers that have been there for too long. An auction process will be determined to ensure fairness and transparency after a meeting with stakeholders in the eastern ports. At number four, the Independent National Electoral Commission has admitted that it has not fully uploaded the results of the presidential elections held on February 25th onto its results viewing portal. They had previously promised to upload the results immediately after voting concluded. INET spokesperson Festus Okoye said that a significant number of results have been uploaded, but not all due to disruptions in certain polling units and areas. Okoye also stated that the upload glitch should not invalidate the entire nationwide polls. At number five, the presidential amnesty program will send 75 pilots and aircraft engineers to South Africa and France for aviation training. It was discovered that some beneficiaries had multiple accounts associated with the BVNs, which led to further investigation. A total of 513 beneficiaries had 1,370 accounts linked to their BVNs, and 2,601 accounts were not linked to their respective BVNs. To resolve this issue, POP created a website for affected beneficiaries to choose one bank account for their payment. 1,561 accounts have been cleared and paid in full, and the problem of multiple account fraud has been resolved. At number six, the Acting Inspector General of Police, Kayade Ebetokun, has instructed the development of a comprehensive training program for colleges and training schools. This program will focus on improving attitudes and behaviours such as physical and technical fitness. The goal is to enhance professionalism, effectiveness and public trust in law enforcement personnel. The IGP recognises that law enforcement requires not just physical strength and technical skills but also mental agility, ethical conduct, empathy and effective communication. At number seven, the governor of Abia State, Alex Otia, suspended all permanent secretaries and the head of service in the state civil service. This decision was made in order to recover properties and funds that belong to the state government. Lady Joy Maduka, director of Ministry of Education, has been appointed as the acting head of service. The remaining permanent secretaries are instructed to transfer their responsibility to the highest ranking director in their department. The suspension is effective immediately. At number eight, the UK government has announced a plan to address the shortage of doctors and nurses in the National Health Service. They aim to hire over 300,000 additional staff and make changes to medical education to increase the number of healthcare professionals trained in the country. The government considers this expansion in education and training for the NHS to be significant as there are currently 112,000 job vacancies that need to be filled. At number 9, the government of River State has ordered the arrest of the engineer in charge of a building that collapsed near Port Harcourt. The Secretary to the State Government, Dr. Tami Danagugu, personally issued a statement to the press stating that this action along with others will help in investigating the cause of the collapse. The government has also instructed that all construction sites must be shut down immediately and efforts be made to find and rescue any people trapped under the debris although the builder denies there are any. It is important to note that four people were injured when the building collapsed during its construction on Thursday morning. Finally, at number 10, the International Agency for Research on 
cancer is expected to classify aspartame, an artificial sweetener found in diet soda and gum, as a potential cancer-causing agent. This classification has caused concern among the food industry and regulators. The upcoming announcement by the IARC has raised concerns about confusion among the public as their classifications in the past have led to worries, legal disputes and changes in recipes. The IARC categorizes substances into four groups based on their potential to cause cancer. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.